Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and this is my cervical vertigo series. Now, today we're going to talk about cervical vertigo and MRI. I've seen people on social media threads post a random MRI, and they're obviously asking the question, is there something on this picture that shows why I have cervical vertigo? Now, there's a couple things you can look for on a static MRI report. We're going to talk about two different things here, a static live face up in a tube MRI and an upright MRI where you're seated with flexion and extension. So uh, if you've got things like C23 or C34 facet hypertrophy on your MRI report, that could explain why you have cervical vertigo. That's arthritis in those joints, and those joints can cause cervical vertigo. Same thing with the C0-C1 joint and the C1-C2 joint. Now, another thing to look for would be if you have an upright MRI with flexion and extension, whether or not there's too much motion or craniocervical instability in the upper neck. But if you just have a standard MRI, other things to look for would be swelling in those upper cervical joints, swelling in the upper uh, cervical bursa or the bursa uh, between the dens and the uh, atlas, and other findings but ultimately a movement-based MRI is going to be better than a static MRI in trying to identify the cause of cervical vertigo. And to understand that better, you need to know more about craniocervical instability. Uh, if you just follow the next video after this, uh, that'll explain craniocervical instability. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Hey, get this out to more patients by like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks so much.